So I thought this could be a fun idea for a video. Chris Sims made a top 40 quarterback rankings, and I figured, hey, why not react to those rank rankings? It's the off season. We don't have anything to talk about. So uh, I figured this could be fun, and I should mention at the top, uh, I like Chris Sims. I think he tends to be pretty good. Uh, I think that he's not afraid to shy away from uh, popular opinion, which is good for content creators. I like it, and listen... Uh, a lot of times he, he'll say some controversial things, but I remember he was like the first person that put Tyreek Hill as the best receiver in football when everyone said that was crazy and he was right. So he's wrong about some things. Uh, he's right about some things. Uh, typically, I care more about the logic behind the thought than the thought itself. So let's get into it, starting at the bottom of the list and working our way up. So at the bottom of the list, Drew Locke, which I believe this became, uh, I think there was a tennis account. It was like the Wimbledon or something. I don't know anything about tennis. Uh, some popular tennis account was like bashing a Seahawks fan and brought up that Drew Locke was 40th on the list, even though there's only 32 teams. Uh, yeah, again, I don't know how like much I'm going to get into these kind of lower tier guys because like the difference between Ty, you know, Ty, Tyrod Taylor and Gardner Minshew, like that's a difficult thing to talk about. I'm not going to bash someone too much for uh, that. But we'll talk about a little surprise to see Teddy Bridgewater this low. I would have had him higher personally. Uh, he did make my top 32 quarterback rankings. I think he's probably better than uh, probably the best quarterback on the Dolphins. At least he was, you know, he was better than Tua was last year statistically. So uh, I'm a little surprised about that. I'm also a little surprised that Kenny Pickett is 39th. I maybe would have had him a little bit higher as well, but it's always difficult with guys who haven't played a snap in the NFL. So no real hot takes here. This graph is a bit surprising a little bit. Uh, I do agree Geno Smith is better than Drew Locke. I, I had him 32nd on my 30, uh, you know, two starting quarterback rankings. So we're kind of both in lockstep there. I'm not a huge Davis Mills guy. I, I'm just not. Uh, although I, I do believe I had him ahead of Geno Smith. So I might have had him a little bit uh, higher on this list. Also, uh, you know, Tyler Huntley, I think that's fair. We, it's just such a small sample size of him. That's kind of the tough thing there. And then uh, Sam Darnold and Trey Lance. Again, I don't know how you go about putting Trey Lance on a list like this. We've seen so, so little of him. Uh, and Sam Darnold, I, I think he should be lower, but whatever. Uh, you know, I've never been a Sam Darnold guy. The next five, so we have Jared Goff at 30. Again, it checks out. I, I would have him a little bit higher personally, again, just because like, we have seen him have some good seasons with the Rams. I still wouldn't completely take that out of the, out of the equation, but he's not spectacular. Uh, two at 29 feels fine. Marcus Mariota at 28 feels a little bit higher. And same thing with Mitchell Trubisky, because one thing I've noticed about both of those two guys is, you know, Mariota has jumped up eight spots, and Trubisky wasn't even on Chris Sims' list last year. I went back and checked the list last year. So I'm not exactly sure what those two guys did to jump up the list. Maybe Sims just feels differently about some of the other guys that have uh, crossed, you know, that have changed. But plus, it's also been a year, and like, if I had to remake a list like this every year, I would probably have similar things like that happen where after just thinking about it for a year, I would change it. It's definitely something that does happen where like I'll be on a podcast and, you know, I don't know, Kyle will put me on the spot and ask me a question about like who is better. Uh, you know, I think wide receivers, I joke about every week I have a different favorite wide receiver in football. Uh, like, you know, one week I'll say, ah, uh, you know, I'll go Tyreek Hill. And then the next week I'll say, yeah, you know, Devontae Adams actually I think is the best one. Nothing has happened in that week. It's just my, you know, I'm viewing it differently. I'm using different logic behind it. Uh, so that's probably all that is, but definitely something that uh, surprised me, which again, it does happen to some degree. And then Jameis Winston here at 26. I, I don't really hate this list. I, I wouldn't be this high on Trubisky or Mariota. I think sometimes not playing allows you to kind of get higher in other people's rankings, but like, who do I trust to have a better season next year, Mitchell Trubisky or Jared Goff? I trust Jared Goff to have a better season. The next five, so we have some, here's always what's weird about this kind of stuff, is like the Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence uh, trio, which they've all kind of been the exact same situation of, showed some flashes as a rookie, but as a whole, we're disappointing, but also we're in tough situations. That's the case of all three of them. And I think what's tough about it, and I always struggle with this when I make my own top 32 uh, you know, uh, quarterback rankings, which you can check out. It's on this channel, the podcast. Just check out top 32 starting quarterbacks. It should come up. Uh, but if you, you know, it's always difficult with these young guys because without a doubt, probably none of these guys will be 22nd, 23rd, and 24th next year. 
but the issue is like one or two of them will be you know top 10 and then the other ones will be like you know bottom 10 so it's always difficult to figure out exactly where they're going to rank so i don't hate that ranking too much again jalen hurts uh, 25 feels very low uh, i think jalen hurts was significantly better than daniel jones was last year that feels low for me daniel jones at 21 feel feels maybe a little high but it, it feels fine uh, he was he's fine this next group these are kind of the uh feels like the guys who aren't the most athletic uh, with the exception of carson wentz but are still solid like game managers wentz is the clear exception there as someone who is very athletic but makes a lot of dumb decisions but these are the solid quarterbacks um again it's a little bit difficult where do you put Mac Jones, where do you put Baker Mayfield. That's always going to be tough, so I can understand kind of throwing them in there. Jimmy Garoppolo, Carson Wentz are, you know, same tier that checks out for me. And then Kirk Cousins, again, I had him a little bit higher on my list, but this is the round where he should be. The next five here, so this is where things get very interesting. There's one very hot take by Mr. Sims here on this one uh, you know first like okay Ryan Tannehill there that checks out and I think the playoff game is gonna dock him some points Matt Ryan at 14 initially surprised me a little bit I think I would be a little bit lower on him than you know guys like Kirk Cousins uh and someone like Ryan Tannehill just because they've played better recently but obviously Ryan has reached higher heights I went back to check and see if Sims uh, you know if this is another one of those Sims you know changes and gets someone a lot is a lot higher on someone after they change teams. Doesn't seem to be the case. Ryan was 15th last year, 14th this year. So what is interesting is what's the case at number 13. Deshaun Watson at 13 is a very surprising decision. Listen, none of us like Deshaun Watson, but Deshaun Watson is a very talented player. Chris Sims had him last year as the fourth best quarterback in football. So I don't know what uh, could have really happened to cause him to drop that far Watson has reached way higher heights than a Derek Carr or even a Kyler Murray has who are ahead of them and even some of the other guys that are, you know, on this list. So I do disagree with that one. I think Deshaun Watson should be significantly higher. Um, Kyler Murray, another guy who I'm surprised and I don't understand this one, quite frankly, because again, Sims had Murray drop five spots. It might just be he's higher on other guys, which I get, but Kyler was good last year. Uh, Kyler had some really good moments. So I think I maybe would be a little bit, uh, I, I guess I'm not really higher on Kyler Murray because I think I had him relatively similar on my list, but I did have him somewhat higher because I do think that, listen, there's a real chance Kyler Murray wins MVP next year. Uh, that's a very real thing that can happen. I don't think you can say that about some of these other guys. Derek Carr, we're around where he should be, give or take a couple spots. I'm good with that. The next five, some, again, some warm takes here. So Lamar Jackson at 10, that feels right. Dak Prescott at nine, I'm surprised so many people, uh, let's talk about Dak Prescott and Matthew Stafford at nine and six. These both feel very high for me. Dak Prescott is someone who we kind of were hoping could take that next step and be an MVP candidate type guy, but he just hasn't been. And that's kind of why I, I would really struggle to put uh, him ahead of Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray has just, we've seen such higher heights personally. And I would say the same with Matt Stafford. Six for Matt Stafford feels very hot. Uh, he wasn't spectacular last year. He was spectacular in the postseason. And if you're a believer in guy, some guys get better when the you know lights shine the brightest, and Stafford is one of those guys, and he's always going to be great in the postseason, then okay, maybe that's the case. But he has played in playoff games before, and he has not been the Rams playoff Matt Stafford of last year. So I would be more likely to say he's probably still the Matt Stafford that we know who he is, who just had a really good run in the postseason. Give him some extra points for that, but I don't think I could put him top 10, let alone top six. Certainly couldn't put him ahead of Tom Brady, who I just don't understand that whatsoever. I don't know what uh, he's thinking there. I think that's almost, you know, indefensible, unless the, the concern is just Brady's age. He might fall off a cliff. Maybe that's it. But other than that, Brady should be higher. And weirdly in all this, Russell Wilson at seven totally checks out. That feels like that's absolutely where he should be, uh, right around there of not quite top five, but still very good. Uh, the injury was probably the main issue of why he didn't play spectacular last year. Top five here. And I think when you see this, you can kind of start to say, okay, I'm starting to see why Sims, uh, you know, th thinks the way that he thinks. He is someone who, value, who I think really values athleticism above all else. You certainly see this in his uh, draft preview stuff. He likes to see what are you great at? What can you do that's spectacular? Um, 
Aaron Rodgers at five. I had him at number one on my list because he's won back-to-back MVPs. Uh, I think he should be higher than these guys. I think that that's a reasonable take. Joe Burrow was great last year. I also had him as a top five quarterback. His advanced statistics were great. His film was great. All that stuff. Justin Herbert at three. Feels a bit warm, but again, he's a top 10 quarterback. And if you are someone who values athleticism as highly as Sims does, then having Herbert, Mahomes, and Allen as a top three, I do understand the logic behind. But number one, Josh Allen, I just can't do this. I I just can't have him at number one. I I think that's not the correct take. He had too many bad games last year. He did. He was inconsistent. Josh Allen was the best quarterback in the playoffs last year. That is absolutely true. But he did not play consistently well every single game last year. He didn't, and he wasn't as consistently good as some of these other guys. Consistency, quite frankly, has been a bit of an issue for Josh Allen throughout his uh, career. Is He does have to learn to be a little bit better uh, with consistency. He had uh, some bad games. He had a bad game against the Colts. He had a bad game against the Jaguars. Uh, you know, he had some uh, rough, I think, rough game against Miami. Uh, so, or at least not the best game against Miami. So he had some tough games and I watched every snap of him. So I saw every single one of these tough games. I get the argument. The argument is, but look at what he can do. I've said before, I think when Josh Allen is on, he is the best quarterback in football. Josh Allen's best day is better than anyone else's best day, but that's not how we view this stuff. You, you can't just view it as, well, who has the highest ceiling because how often you reach that ceiling, which is still relatively often. He's a very good quarterback. Uh, he is an elite quarterback. I just a little bit lower on him than I think the general consensus. Certainly lower on him than first overall. But again, if all you, if your main focus is on athleticism, I can see the argument because he is maybe the best athlete out of any of these guys. So yeah, that's kind of what I think. I think again, a fun list. I don't agree with all of it, of course. When are you going to ever agree with an entire list? A couple that are certainly I would consider head scratchers, but you know, uh, it's always fun at the very least. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.